the same line of 50% um, of uh, sales reps say that um, they don't use um, their CRM um, as efficiently, which means that they just buy two. So <laughs> they say, great, just give me two. So you sit there with two computers <laughs> and putting it in twice. Welcome to Under the Hood. Welcome back, everybody, to the Under the Hood podcast, episode three of season two. two. Season two. two. Well, two, two. full swing, full swing with season two. Hope you're enjoying season two, episode three. Me to too. Come. I am. I am indeed. And also here at our new location, now working out really well for us at the Bella Vista Hotel. Again, thank you for having us. And yep. uh, this is Under the Hood, the show where we talk about all things to do with technical marketing, you know, sales, CRM, pretty much everything to do with uh, anything uh, digital. Technical. Related, <laughs> Digi- digital marketing related, etc. That's if, right. If and we listen- try we try and simplify it as well for you. You yeah. know, like, like if if you're like me and you're not a say a mechanic and you open the hood mm. of a modern vehicle and you just look there, not knowing not what to plugs to pull or mm. to press or whatever, mm. this is the show for you. But not for that, but for under the hood of anything technical. Yes, and we also just try to make it more conversational, and lighthearted. Mm. I mean, you know, I don't like those boring ones that just go on and on and people waffle on like we're doing right now. Yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> but speaking. <laughs> just of like you guys. But speaking of waffling on, if you like this waffle, uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't yep. already. Uh, if you're listening on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you might be watching or listening to. So basically, we have 10 minutes. 10 minutes to talk about today's topic. Uh, once Tony's timer there goes off, uh, there'll be the signal to stop on the topic completely. And then we'll move into our toolkit segment, yep. which what's which that all about? No, you got, <laughs> you've got your toolkit today? I did. I brought yeah. it. I yeah, brought it out of the car. Um, but what is the toolkit segment about, Tony? Yeah. So the toolkit is uh, is where we sort of um, share with you some of the, the tools, as in technical tools that we've been playing around with for the last week or two. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a show and tell, really, of uh, what, we, what we're doing. So, um, you know, you can always look out. It could be an app. App. could be something uh, really useful that you can mm. use in your business. So we'll mm. uh, open the toolkit mm-hmm. uh, a little bit later in the show. Shall I start the timer and uh, reveal today's episode? Absolutely. Please do so, Mr. All Eads. All right, starting the timer now. And the topic is your sales CRM is broken. <gasps> and here's why. Hopefully Ooh. we're going to cover off why. <laughs> you got some stats, I think, to kick us off with. I mean, what is a CRM? There well, might be people watching this saying, let, let's, yeah. what is it? That's a good point, Tony. Let's cover that off first because a CRM, I think uh, a lot of people misunderstand its use and its purpose uh, still to these days. They've been around for many, many years in many different iterations and they haven't really been a huge emphasis on it. I think a lot of people think a CRM is somewhat of a glorified uh, Excel spreadsheet maybe. And and in some cases it is for some people. I think they haven't (laughs) moved for the last 20 years. That's that's true. In creating, say, uh, marketing lists or, you know, logging sales calls or just keeping contact data, right? Yep. So they often think of it as that as not much else and not getting much use of it. When we use the term broken, though, maybe to talk a little bit more to the actual topic in mind, um, I think it's more in the initial adoption um, that they are not being used to their fullest potential when it comes to the CRM. Um, and that's why we use the term being broken. Yep. Um, CRMs consistently have a low adaption rates and people in sales they tend to just waste time with information from that uh, as part of their investment yeah. that just have no purpose being in a CRM and often miss out on information that should be in a CRM that they are not putting in. Yeah. Um, and uh, your sales reps weren't hired to do data entry. Well, that's so. a big one, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want your sales reps selling, not mm. not sitting there uh, mm. putting data in. Um, and, and just for those that are still thinking, what is a CRM? It's customer relationship management. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you do it right, it could be customer relationship magic. Mm. Because, uh, you know, if you're really understanding. But but back to that last point you mm. made, a rep spends on average five and a half hours a week, they reckon, according to HubSpot, mm. um, adding contacts and activities compared with selling, where they reckon they spend on average 18% of their time selling, which is 7.2 hours. So you've got five hours of data entry and seven hours of selling. What if you could 
add that five onto the seven by automating your CRM processes. It's so true. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, if you could really reduce that time, uh, imagine you know what you could be accomplishing. You know? Well, selling. Exactly. <laughs> you should be selling. Selling, but um, in a sense of making relationships that yeah. actually count outside your CRM. You know, I think yep. people get lost in the data and they uh, then spend too much time in there and it becomes a really sort of a, a blocked kind yep. of experience as a sales rep. Maybe that's why a lot of them feel like they want to move away from using a CRM because it really uh, disconnects from the love of what they like to do with their job, which is connect with people. So yep. I think that's probably one of the big reasons they don't use it. Well, I think I think so because, it, it, you know, nowadays, and I think you and I talk about this all the time, is that mm. selling far more today is about conversation. It's mm. conversational selling. That's the term, right? Mm. So if you're actually in a process of selling to someone or, or you're not even really selling, but you're just understanding the customer and going through their pain points, mm. it's very hard for you to have that conversation and be natural well in the side you're typing into your data entry <laughs> crm <laughs> trying to do it so i think mm. you know one of the things is sell now have mm. that conversation now and then think about it later mm. you know mm. and then the idea of making making it super easy for you to put that data because it because it is important we're not we're not underrating the importance of a crm because you know good data in gives you great data reporting out Agreed. And also um, part of that is that sort of the bridge between sales and marketing and what a CRM could do in that regard. Here's another stat that I found, Tony, yep. that actually um, sort of folds into that point. Um, CRMs um, is only used 50% of the time to bridge the gap between sales professionals in the organization and marketing. So that's 50% of the time, really, that someone from sales is relying on some information coming from marketing via their CRM. That's like a whole other half of... Hmm. The, the point of a CRM that you should be using it for is to gather that information from every touch point they've had up to the point where a salesperson is interacting with that person in your CRM, you know, through yeah. a phone call or email or whatever it is you're choosing to contact them with. Yeah. Um, which actually um, bodes well with another stat that I found, which is not on this list, but I found out that about uh, 50% um, Seems to be a common number there. <laughs> <laughs> on the same line of 50% um, of uh, sales reps say that um, they don't use um, their CRM um, as efficiently, which means that they just buy two. So <laughs> they say, great, just give me two. So you sit there with two computers <laughs> putting it in twice. Yeah, double entry, I think that's called. Double uh, entry. <laughs> Dave, double entry. It's interesting because it, it, every time you say 50%, I instantly think of the old uh, stat where they say, you know, 50% of your marketing works and 50% doesn't. It's knowing which of those 50% it is so you can do more of the right one and less of the wrong one. Uh, but it's not as easy as doubling it up, unfortunately. Yeah. So the um, question is then, Tony, I think why is is what I want to get to first. Mm. Why, um, why are they broken? <laughs> why are they broken? <laughs> but, but well, what are the causes, do you think? Um, one of my key ones I put down, I think, was that uh, salespeople are taught to sell now and think later. I think yeah. that is one of the key things. Mm. And you mentioned data entry before, but you know, most, as we saw from those stats, don't even bother with that these days. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, this, yeah. it's the sell now, think later opinion. Um, and also, also, I think that's kind of the old school sort of approach versus the new age tech gap that I think a lot of sales reps face. I think as well, we're living in a world where communication comes in many different forms, many different mm. channels. So your, your CRM is kind of like if it's done, done properly, it's got to have all your data in the right place, right? But things like mobile phones, very hard to bring the data from a conversation you've had because you know, you're out and about as a salesperson. A lot of salespeople are mobile, so they take a sales call on the mobile. You mm -hmm. know, Unless you've got a really good uh, CRM that can record that conversation, convert the transcript afterwards, office phones are even worse. Mm -hmm. You know, We've got an office phone that rings randomly <laughs> but, but it could be a sales we, call we answer it every time <laughs> to our customers we answer it every time i swear to god but that actually brings up a point in the toolkit section later tony in, good in All the right. toolkit section i'm going to bring up something that might actually bridge that gap so that's a little sneak oh, preview okay you've got to a bit, the of, toolkit a, bit section. of a tech to sort that out mm. and then of course email right a lot of crms don't i mean obviously hubspot crm does but there's a lot of crms that don't track email mm. and you know and and if you're not communicating via phone you're communicating via email mm. so those emails are going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards you're not tracking that conversation mm. you're missing out on a lot of that that core data of how that sales mm. process is working yeah plus also it's your energy and your efforts um through not having that information that get wasted if yep. you think about it because if you're seeing as you know through your tracking of emails as people opening emails versus not and that's giving you a score on this person you can use to like determine whether or not they're worth contacting or not that'll save you a lot of time between just 
calling those people who have never opened up an email, you yeah. know, or maybe just one in the last year. And don't year. we hate that? You know, when people just ring, I mean, please don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, the phone rings and, and you said this morning, we were mm. talking about it because I took a phone call where we were, we were pr- uh, prepping for this and you said, oh, you sound quite happy. And I said, yeah, it was a, a, a nice call. The person was ringing saying my barbecue had arrived. <laughs> but if it had been someone trying to sell me something, that tone would have been a lot different. <laughs> you could tell uh, they weren't talking out of a CRM. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> although it may have been an AI generated person you never know it could be so what should we be doing let's get straight to the chase so we know they're broken how do we fix them all right here's one of the keywords everyone's talking everyone mentions especially when it comes to crms automation automation love that word love it love it love it every day every night when i go to bed when i wake up automation (laughs) (laughs) what is i guess in a general sense what does automation mean to you tony yeah, so automation means like if you take away the tasks that you do generally that could be done by something else, like mm. it could be a, a bot, it could be the system itself, mm. but you know things that can be automated, triggered off mm. without you physically having to sit there and go, okay, that person's called me, manually go in and do something, mm. send them a reply email, manually type it, like all of that manual is gone with mm. a lot of this automation, which means you're left hands-free to be able to do more stuff. Yep, agreed, agreed. And then I think a lot of people get intimidated by that, though. As we talked about before, you know, sales reps, you know, a lot of the time, 50%, as the facts show, that yeah, they yeah. don't want to interact with their CRM. So I think the one way to, I think, bridge the gap is to set your foundations first for understanding what use of automation you actually need and get use from, yeah. especially from a sales and or sales to marketing, marketing to sales perspective, right? Yeah. Setting those foundations, building out the buyer journey, understanding like, oh, this is when sales gets or marketing gets handed over to sales. And then at sales, what kind of automations can be in place to really help and affect my job better than hinder it or make it more complicated? Yeah. And you'll find that platforms like HubSpot, you know, they do offer you know, very simplified automation yeah. tools in the sales realm. And I think as well, like someone like um, HubSpot, <laughs> that's the T-shirt I'm wearing, um, <laughs> also grows with your business. Because I think it's something important. Like if you're getting a CRM today, there's a lot of CRMs you can just get off the shelf. Some of them are free. Mm. Um, even HubSpot's free to start with, but it can grow with your business and have a look at what your budget is as well. Because uh, I did a cost analysis here of uh, HubSpot versus Salesforce. And the first year with, say, 50 salespeople, if you're a decent-sized business, $75,000 on HubSpot versus $236,000 for the same kind kind of automation and mm. setup with Salesforce. So um, I think I'll go the other way. I don't, <laughs> unless you want to spend 236000 If you've got the budget for it, you know, if you're a bank where you have all my money, then I'm sure you can uh, invest in uh, in Salesforce. <laughs> yeah. And I think finally lead scoring, make sure you do lead scoring because that, mm. that helps you, you know, using the CRM. So, you know, which of the hot mm. leads that you actually want to do business with yeah. and which are the ones you don't. <laughs> well, to, exactly. And look, to go in a little bit more depth about lead scoring, because people talk about it a lot, but I think they don't understand. Oh, oh it's, it's <laughs> cut off on me oh, this a, time. Maybe we have to do a whole episode on lead scoring. No, go on. You can have a few, few more seconds about your passion, because I know you love lead scoring. <laughs> look, I'll keep it short and sweet, but basically in HubSpot, lead scoring in essence is a very simple tool whereby you just basically map a bunch of touch points. You expect uh, a team typical lead to have and based upon those touch points say opening an email you know booking a meeting coming to an event you know they attribute a certain score and then over time you just add up that score or the crm does it for you when you Mm. set it up for automation purposes in hubspot very simply as well i might add and then once it reaches a certain score level so um, like a hundred points like a hundred points yep yep, it'll then notify the respective sales rep say in that region or just for the whole company in general and then they'll know that that's a potential good lead to Mm. then start a conversation with and that's really interesting right because a lot of people you know, don't call up all the time or you don't know when they're ready. Mm. They sort of sit in the background and they start absorbing your information and downloading this Mm. and opening an email here. So this Mm. is tracking quietly in the background Mm. their intent, I suppose, Mm. to be a a sales qualified lead. Exactly, exactly. Well, that was was our discussion. I think we covered a lot of ground there. Yes, Um, CRMs are broken and how to fix them. I think we did that in 10 (laughs) minutes. So (laughs) let's move on to Toolkit. The Toolkit. Come on, get on with okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so, in my toolkit this week, Tony, um, there are two things I wanted to just pop out. Um, one is around 
again, HubSpot, but in what I was alluding to earlier was around a real huge problem I think salespeople have, which is around call tracking. Now, mm. it's been around for a while where in HubSpot, you can basically have a phone number uh, from uh, the HubSpot CRM that tracks any call to any contact respectively, right? So then you have the full call contact record in there. But now HubSpot has released this new call tracking and logging feature that can also be tied in with workflow. So automation, wow. which is super cool. I was playing around with it earlier and basically via conversations that you have in uh, your HubSpot tracking call, you can log the transcript, right? And in the transcript, it basically shows, you know, person one talking, hello there, this is blah, 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 from blah. And then person responds. You have all that you know, nice information there. What then HubSpot can do is track the keywords that come in through that conversation, which is really cool. And then based upon the keywords talked about, like say lunch at five or, you know, book a meeting, right? HubSpot workflows can then pick out that keyword referenced in that conversation and then trigger off, workflows, automation based upon that. So say it could like, you know, trigger off book a meeting, sends the booking meeting link directly to that person's email. You know? Wow, that's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty wicked. You've got to watch say. what you say though. <laughs> yes. you, but I suppose you wouldn't have a workflow set up for, uh, you know, whatever. My, my auntie's are on the rather large size, so it triggers, <laughs> <laughs> triggers off a workflow based on your auntie's size. It, uh, it, it, <laughs> it kicks off a Jenny Craig subscription <laughs> uh, link, yes. Um, the, that's the, cool. The other one, yeah, so I really like that one. The other one that was really cool because um, – both of these tie into the uh, CRM discussion that we were having. The other one is around uh, tying in for sales reps, uh, your proposals that you put in, uh, you know, through your yep. emails these and th and days. And that can be a very manual system. You know, a lot of people we see using all of these wonderful tech in CRMs and then they get a Word document to <laughs> manually type in the proposal when they're ready to do the deal. Yeah, exactly. Or so worse, tell us I don't need to do that. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. And worse <laughs> still, they send off one that's, you know, just a standard PDF that has all the, you know, standard wording that is not yeah, relevant not to that person. Exactly. Yep. You want it personalized, right? Well, this uh, integration with HubSpot or any other uh, CRM platform through either Pandadoc or Quilla. So I'm promoting both. Quilla, Pandadoc basically do the same things. They do it slightly differently, though. If you want yep. more of a visual appealing aspect that, you know, pulls in uh, CRM data into like the first name, the company name, the deal amount, all those bits and reference that you have in the deal record in HubSpot directly into the proposal without you needing to lift a finger, Quilla and Pandadoc both do that very very, very well. Quilla, yeah. more visually kind of interesting with blocks and modules built out that you can customize to your company branding versus Pandadoc, which is a bit more like what you were saying is a bit more of a customized sort of uh, standard doc. So like yeah. a like a Word doc. But in that instance too, it's also a lot easier to sort of edit and customize and whatnot. So there's benefits of both. What about like a welcome video? You know, video is a big thing now, right? Yeah. It's nice to receive a proposal with a personalized welcome video. Can they both do that? They can both do that. Quilla does it a little better in terms of embedding the video into like the actual design of the proposal so it nice. feels a little bit more uh native i guess to the the doc yeah yeah cool yeah well i rummage around in my toolkit <laughs> and uh, out <laughs> popped bevy <laughs> <laughs> so Bevy, um, I want to share this because obviously we're moving into a world now where we can get more events. Now, whether it's a virtual event or a live event, we're doing one this evening, mm. uh, physical, in person, real people, you know, it's starting to become, mm. you know, post-COVID into there. Mm. So Bevy is basically for setting up, you know, landing pages, super easy. It looks slick, similar to what you're saying with Quilla, easy to use. You can add pictures, mm. add video add everything together, um, all of your information goes in there so people can register for your event and then when they come to your event, you can check them out. So, you know, check them in, sorry, as they come through. Mm. So the good thing I find with Bevy, it's easy to use, a lot easier than, you know, some of the other ones like Eventbrite, connects with HubSpot. So if you are using HubSpot as your CRM, you connect the two together. So again, as Gabe was saying, you can trigger off workflows, you can do a whole bunch of things as people come pre-event and post-event. So check mm. that one out, it's bevy.com. I like it, Bevy. Yeah. Bevy. It's also kind of a nice name. It kind of alludes to events and I mean, let's have a Bevy, mate. Is yeah, it, a, yeah, is it Australian? Right. Actually, that's true. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, 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 don't. It could be, yeah. Very good for alcoholic events. <laughs> and we are at the bar, so yeah. this is it's very appropriate. Very appropriate. And uh, with that said, uh, thank you for joining us at the yes. bar, at the Bella Vista Hotel, that is, at the podcast studio. Thank you for having us yet again. And yep. uh, this has been another episode of Under the Hood. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe, like, comment below if we didn't touch upon 
something within the topic of today yep. uh, that you would like. We'll us. have another go. <laughs> yeah, we'll have another go at it. You know, to talk more about it. We're happy to do so. Maybe do a part two to this because CRM is a big oh, subject. I think it's going to be a part two to a lot of these conversations because we, we really limit our time to keep it nice and concise. Now, mm. next up, we have a fantastic theme. This mm. is for episode four. Mm. Sack your team. Sack your sales team, I think that is, isn't it? And invest in automation. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, we should. Uh, so hopefully all the managers are listening in and the bosses are not the team. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we'll explain it. There's still a job for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're not changing. Or is there? Ah, well, that's <laughs> what you'll have to find out in the next episode of Under the Hood. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll catch you next time.